guys, Richard Holder here and welcome to the channel. What happens when you're running a turbo intake manifold test on a 3800 V6 and you do this? Okay guys, what about that intake test? Pretty cool, but we're here to talk about turbocharged intake manifolds and what we're really talking about is actually runner length. The best way to demonstrate what a turbocharged manifold does and why is actually to run it not turbocharged but naturally aspirated. That way it'll tell us what it does and then how that applies to turbocharging. What we're really looking at here is a change in rudder length. And lucky for us, the two factory intake manifolds run on these 3800 V6s are very interesting because they allow us to change the rudder length. That's right, we can remove the lid both on the composite version and on the aluminum version. We can pull out the factory long runner section, replace that with what's called a high velocity insert, meaning a short runner with a radius entry, put that back on and retest it in short runner form. Very cool stuff. And what intake runner like does is long runner intake manifolds usually add power down low, short runners usually add them up top. So what we're going to see is a dramatic change in the power curve, which is awesome. And that will tell us what happens when we run a turbo motor. I've got one other intake manifold, and that's the one that we did the very cool test on, that we pulled the backing plate out to make it maximum flow, and it was very cool. So I also have that test. Let's check it out. Good thing started on our turbo manifolds. Actually, the best way to do that is to run them naturally aspirated. And the reason for that is we can demonstrate what these intake manifolds do because everything that they do naturally aspirated, they also do that under boost. And what we can talk about is the effect of the intake design and how it's ultimately going to affect turbo, meaning really response and the power curve. So let's take a look at the testing that we did. The first one was the early composite intake manifold. And we ran this both in stock trim and with the high velocity inserts from the guys at ZZP. So the high velocity inserts, as we sh I'll show you a photo here, you can take a look at what they do basically is if you remove the lid of the factory intake manifold, in this case it's a composite version, the lower aluminum manifold I'm told is the same between the early and late versions, but the composite section is different and relies on a different throttle body. I'll show you a photo of the throttle body here. Take a look at that. Now, if you remove the upper plenum, what you can do is there's a runner insert. You have to remove the gasket. You can pull the insert out. You replace that with the HPV, the high velocity insert section, and then you install the gasket back on. What that does is two things. One, well, it does three things, actually. What it does is provide a radius entry into the port, so that helps airflow into the port. It also shortens the runner dramatically by replacing the long runner section with the insert. You're basically changing the runner length. And that's really what we're going to see here is a big change in runner length. Also, and secondarily, I think you're changing the plenum volume. If you get rid of the runner inserts and there's just open plenum in there, you're also changing the plenum volume. In most of my testing, that doesn't seem to make a big effect on power, but runner length definitely does. Let's take a look now and see what the difference is in runner length. Our test motor was an L67 stock bottom man short block from the wrecking yard. It actually had ported L67 heads on it, although in our testing, the ported heads didn't really show very much power gain over the stock heads that we replaced it with. Now, we also had a camshaft in this. In this case, it was a ZZP camshaft. The camshaft was a 507 lift, 220 to 30 degree duration, and 112 degree lobe separation angle. We had stock rockers on this. This is basically an L67 motor that we had been running a bunch of boost stuff on. We did have the tubular headers run on this thing. It was run with the Holly HP management system, meaning we could optimize the tune. This test was actually run on E85 more because later on we would be adding the turbo to that. So stay tuned if you haven't seen that. Well, you haven't seen it yet, but stay tuned. I'll be running lots of turbo stuff. Even made a comparison between the turbo and the blower at various boost levels and lots of good stuff. But before I did that, I wanted to find out actually what intake manifold worked the best. So I ran this test as a preliminary deal before we added boost from the turbo. So this composite intake manifold run first with the long runner section, basically as the stock intake manifold. Our combination, our naturally aspirated low, <coughs> excuse me, low compression version produced 259 horsepower and 263 foot-pounds of torque. 
Here's what happened when we removed the runner section from the composite upper manifold and replaced it with the inserts, making this into a short runner manifold. As you can see, on the top end, past 5,000 RPM, power picked up quite a bit. We went from 259 horsepower up to 269 horsepower, so we picked up 10, even more out here at the very top as the other one was kind of falling off. But the trade-off, and this is often what we see on long runner versus short runner manifolds, we lost power down low. So we, we went from, we lost as much here at, uh, let's say 4,100 RPM, and went from 254 foot-pounds up to 264 foot pounds. So what you're doing is trading 10 foot pounds of torque down low below say 4,500 RPM or almost 5,000 RPM uh, to more power on the top end. So really the choice of intake manifold is where do you want your power? That's what these inserts do. By shortening the runner, they're gonna shift the power curve higher in the RPM range. So the question is whether it's boosted or naturally aspirated, where do you want your power? Just like with the composite naturally aspirated intake, we, com we compared the aluminum version. The aluminum version, obviously, I'm going to show you here, had a different throttle body. It had the four-hole throttle body. It was slightly larger than the composite intake manifold, although they, these two for this test shared the same lower manifold. Just like the composite manifold, the aluminum upper intake manifold also had the same type of insert that you install, and we use a slightly different um, high-velocity insert, but the same effect. Basically, what we're doing is shortening the runners just like we did on the composite test. We just wanted to try it on this intake manifold as well. This intake manifold actually made a little bit more power, and we'll go ahead and take a look at that at the end of this, but comparing the long runner, short runner version of this aluminum intake, the long runner version produced 262 horsepower and 271 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened like we did with the composite manifold where we changed to the inserts and shortened the intake runner length. And it did the same thing. It lost power down low and picked up power up top. We went from 262 to 269 horsepower. Gains were most prevalent past 5,500 RPM range, uh, 5,500 RPM in this combination. And here at 4,200, we went from 256 foot-pounds to 271 foot-pounds. This aluminum intake manifold on the long runner version seemed to carry power a little bit farther than the composite one. And we showed this kind of gain. This is fairly typical of long runner versus short runner. As I said, long runner, good for lower speed power and torque production. And then the short runner, better for top end. Now let's take a look at one more intake manifold and that's using the blower lower intake manifold and a gutted blower upper. Basically what we did was remove the rotor pack from the factory M90 and use that as the NA intake manifold. This is the power curve generated by the factory L67 lower blower intake manifold and as I said the gutted M90 supercharger used as the upper plenum. So we're using the factory throttle body. I made this plate as you can see here to cover the opening uh, that was usually occupied by the rotor pack. So with the cover plate we were able to cover that. We used the factory throttle body and then you just use the big plenum. Um, I had previously cut out the V section, I'll show you a little clip here, cut the V section out of the M90 supercharger, hoping that that would improve flow, and it did just a little bit, but not dramatically. But what I'm gonna show you in just a second is a video where we did an even major modification to this particular intake manifold that did show a big power gain. But this is the power curve, and since this is basically a short runner, I want to show you this in comparison to the other short runner versions of the factory NA intake manifolds when we use the inserts. So here is the composite short runner version and you can see the short runner is a relative term because if we look at the lower intake manifold, the lower intake manifold used on the supercharged combination, those runners are actually shorter than the intake we use with the HPV or the HP, the high velocity insert. Those are actually longer so not surprisingly they made a little bit more power and they actually made more power all the way up to the very top which shows us that the very short runner on the blower manifold, the runners actually need to be longer than that if we want to stay in this RPM range. If we were running to seven or eight or 9,000 RPM, very short runners come into their own. We obviously don't have enough camshaft or cylinder head for that. But for this kind of RPM range, having more runner length obviously pays big, big dividends. And this is what happened. This is a comparison between the aluminum version of that, the short runner intake manifold. 
and there's really not a lot to choose from between the short runner versions of the composite and the aluminum but both of those are a little bit better than the just using the the blower intake manifold lower and the gutted M90. Now let's take a look at a test that we did using that blower manifold and I'm gonna show you something really cool. So here's a cool test that we ran on the gutted blower and we ran the L67 blower lower intake manifold. We ran our gutted blower top. But what I wanted to find out is, is the throttle body, is the stock throttle body, even on this NA motor, is it restrictive even on this combination? Because I'm pretty sure that that stock throttle body is restrictive on the L67 on the M90 supercharger. And that's one of the reasons that the L32 supercharger flows better and makes more power. Obviously it's a better design, but it also has a better inlet system. So I wanted to find out if the inlet system on this NA motor was restrictive. And the best way to do that, as I'll show you, is we just remove that whole backing plate that we used. Then we had all the airflow that this thing could possibly use. But the question is, did it need more airflow? Did it want more airflow? Or was the throttle body and the inlet system already supplying enough? So the only way to do that is we had somebody stand in the dyno. I went to wide open throttle. And then when you go to wide open throttle, we already had the plate unbolted. The plate was being drawn in by vacuum when the thing is at, at idle and part throttle. But once you're at wide open throttle, there's nothing holding that plate in. So and you can see, simply reach in, grab the plate and pull it off and let me test the thing. <laughs> fully open and that means maximum airflow and here's what happened when we did that we did see a change in power as you can see the it did want more airflow it picked up power basically everywhere and so that tells me that the inlet side of the m90 supercharger is restrictive and probably even more so uh, on a supercharge combination. Now, obviously on the supercharge combination, we also port the discharge side of it, but the inlet side definitely needs to be bigger. In, in my opinion, what it would be best is cut that snout off and figure out a way to put a three and a half inch tube in there and run a big 90 millimeter throttle body into the inlet side. But this was kind of a cool test and it just shows that, hey, the thing wanted more airflow and when we gave it more airflow, it made more power. Let's get to our conclusion. So what do we learn from this intake test without a turbo. How can we have a turbo intake test without a turbo? Go ahead and make those comments. The reality is this test on our turbo intake manifolds should have been done and it was done naturally aspirated. And the reason that I did that is because I wanted to demonstrate what runner length is. Actually intake manifolds are not NA or boost specific. They're really more RPM specific as we showed here. When you change the runner length of the manifold, you change the effective operating range of that manifold. Longer runners, as we showed, make more low speed power. Shorter runners make more top end power. So choosing an intake has way more to do with where you want your power production than it does whether it's a naturally aspirated or a turbo combination. Because when we add boost to this, guess what happens? Whatever your NA power curve is, whether it's the long runner curve or the short runner curve, when you add boost to that, it's exactly the same. There's just more of it because there's boost, which always is awesome. But when I look at long runner manifolds, I think of a very important thing. When you get more low speed power on a turbo combination, you also get more boost response. So all that extra power and torque that you get from the longer runner, you can multiply that by boost because you're going to get more boost response. So you're going to see an even greater power gain with the long runner manifold down low on a turbo application than you will with the short runner. But that short runner manifold does storm really hard on the big end. Maybe that's the way to go for you. I'm Richard Older. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.